Beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed. Help me sing worship to
listen to me worship is a very deep sign of humility it's not just a sign that you love God or you honor God it's a recognition you worship God with understanding that Lord you can do without me it is within your power to take me out of your program but why you keep me I don't understand there's a song I want you to sing that message way song who will sing that song for me Jesus you love me you know the song I'm talking about I, I want to hear that song let's just sing that song and then we'll sit down your love is mine is the truth I now understand why David said what is man what is man if you can make a donkey speak why should man be the one speaking for you what is man that thou art mindful of 
as you begin to see the faithfulness of God in your life you will get to a point where you will know I didn't pray for this this one is not fasting this one didn't come by study how we came I don't understand and you just say Lord let 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 your name be glorified Jesus you be lifted starting is obvious because you don't have any notable results it's easy to say it is God but a time comes when men say you are the doer and you will first say I'm not the doer but later on you will be tempted to say but come to think of it is it not my power and the might of my hand that is the foolishness that can throw a man from any height it took a king and turned a king into a beast that whoever can be stupid enough to roll before God, you will never roll before men. I tell you this. That you can lose your dignity before God to say, Lord, I am nothing. Oh, it's not, you are not condemning yourself. It's a recognition. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before Help me I cast my crown before The highest, the highest royal I am undone before I am undone before The majesty The majesty The majesty
speak peace. Let me speak peace to the heart of someone. Many of us do not know the value of peace. Whatever you have, if you do not have peace, you are not free. No matter what you have. Jesus said, my peace I give you. There are many things in the Bible that God gave man without his request. One of it is his peace. He said, this type of peace, the world cannot give. I speak peace to every heaviness, peace to every worry, peace to every stress. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace to every storm in your life. I want you to know that God is alive and God is in control. Peace to your spirit. Let every heaviness, let every depression give way. The peace of the Lord garrisons your heart tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Sometimes we just get lost in worship. These extended moments of worship are very, very powerful because many things happen in worship. I was preparing to minister a program. It was a worship program. And while I was meditating, the Lord gave me a revelation about the woman with the alabaster box and the lord told me that perfume is not the only thing you can put in an alabaster box whatever you do not want to see you can carry it and put it in that box and take it to him you can put your pain in the box you can put your worries in the box because everything presented in that box never returns to you and so it's not only your crown that you give you can put your pain you can put the worries and break it before him and say lord know what to do with it i have handed this over to you hallelujah it's a powerful thing to really be in the presence of god my prayer for us is that we continue to value his presence that we get to a point where we begin to see the relevance by every standard and from every dimension to see the relevance the profitability of dwelling in his presence hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord it's good to be back home let's get to the word i'm happy to be back it's been a very stressful month already and we bless the name of the lord for the privilege to take his life and his word around the nations let the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus name we thank God for the remarkable things to you be all the glory in the name of Jesus the Lord put what I'm about to teach you in my heart since last month I was just waiting to allow the set time to just discuss it with us everyone's and again the spirit of the Lord Pastor Shago it's good to see you again God bless you thank you everyone's and again the Lord would come to check our level of spiritual progress you see believers are likened to a house that is being built the Bible says we all as living stones that we are being built into a spiritual house and it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to check and meticulously vet the construction to make sure not only that the house is built well but that everything that should be captured inside that house is well represented are we together so god would come every once and again to our lives and find out the areas where the testimony of jesus is not yet established and he will build us up this is why it is powerful to walk with the holy spirit if you really walk with the holy spirit your life will be complete and balanced if you see him building you in a dimension and you see that there is a lopsidedness you just be patient with him very soon he will come and pick up that side and you become an exceptional trophy very balanced very accurate 
one of the things about dominion i've been looking at this and even in my external ministrations i've been talking about it that we need to understand the dominion systems of the kingdom we need to understand that that's not what i'm talking about but that if the saints remember the bible says that we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and then it says by them we reign in life it is god's desire that the church enters her glorious destiny experientially and that will only happen when dominion is established are we together now i told you that it is against the law of the spirit for a man to glorify himself so you will lift another who brings you glory you don't glorify yourself in the spirit so it is the son that brings glory to the father and then the church the ecclesia in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son but then how is the church now glorified are we together now it is in subjecting principalities and powers and the elements of this system bringing them to the obedience of christ that is how the glory of the church the bride is seen so jesus glorifies the father the church in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son then the dominion of the church within this sphere of god's kingdom is how the church is glorified are we together now so it matters to god that the church that we not only continue to learn and grow and fall down and stand up but that we sustain the intelligence and the empowerment two important things the intelligence and the empowerment to rise to a point where experientially the church of the lord jesus christ will not only advance in terms of communicating the gospel of the kingdom but that we get to a point where the dominion of the church is recognized across the sociological strata of human existence and will continue to strive to make this happen in the name of jesus and i've taught us you know different messages put together that there are systems for dominion please listen carefully there are many indices that you put together to measure dominion the ability to exact sovereign control over a territory and one of it at random in no particular order is influence have taught us the power of influence that kingdom advance does not just happen through evangelism alone but through influence say influence i'm teaching you now say influence influence is very important and believers must be mentored and cultured to see the relevance of kingdom influence influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your values to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about god and life without using force or cruelty is called influence are we together now that you get to a point where you can cause a territory to value what you value to prioritize what you prioritize like ruth told naomi your god will be my god your people will be my people so you get to a point where you exert a level of pressure on people to bend and subscribe to your values and your ideologies but you do not use force you do not use cruelty you use something called inspiration influence thrives on inspiration the flawlessness of your results compelling people to see the excellency of modeling their lives after the results that they seek which they see in your life the church will never be able to do much if we ignore influence because you see in this world that we live in at every given point someone is influencing you and you are influencing another person are we together now yes if we ever frown at the decadence that we see in our society the decadence did not come by personal indoctrinations it came by using certain people who are called gatekeepers 
of certain mountains to demonstrate and market that value so strong that an entire territory within a short period of time can buy into that conviction are we together now yes nobody just sits down for instance and loves to be gay I'm just using as an example except that someone who is in a position that can inspire is empowered both by hell and the gatekeepers of this cosmos to market an ideology that would have been ugly if it were marketed by someone with no influence so usually the devil will find people who have um, they are inspiration worthy and then he will incorporate that flaw in their life so that they will sell that idea and we receive everything hook line and sinker because they stand in a position where they can influence our thinking the church needs to be influential remember the dream of king nebuchadnezzar that daniel interpreted daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands he was interpreting the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, the chest and the breastplate of silver and all of that, that were representations of many kingdoms that will come. And then the feet that was mixed with clay and iron, a type of many systems incorporated in one and daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands it arose and crushed that kingdom then the stone became a mountain a stone became a mountain a strata of influence and then he says that a kingdom was given to the saints and that that kingdom cannot be destroyed and that kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and jesus now comes to say that kingdom is called the church he says i am the builder of it the rejected stone the chief cornerstone now becomes a mountain and becomes a kingdom a collection of people and an invincible force that will crush every kingdom the Bible said it. The king had the dream and Daniel interpreted it. And it will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. So we need influence. We need a lot of it. One of the other elements that we need to be able to exert dominion. I'm just giving us the foundation. So when we say we should walk in dominion it's not just a vague talk of authority no there are certain specifics that must be in place if the church is to dominate are we together one of it for instance is spiritual empowerment there cannot be true dominion until that individual is empowered the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help that means the issue of help is mandatory it's just that people outsource help from different dimensions others can outsource help from sorcery and witchcraft others can outsource help from education and um, our secular enlightenment others can outsource help from relationships and human connections and then the psalmist said for me oh, i can't speak for everybody but my help cometh from the lord the maker of the heavens and the earth are we together so it's established that nobody rises and commands dominion unassisted you must be assisted by a dimension that is beyond the three-dimensional realm so every time you see someone exerting dominion in any sphere of influence at all there is no need guessing whether that person has been assisted or not if at all you care to guess you will want to just guess the source of the assistance not that that person was assisted it is impossible to walk in dominion unassisted are we together men are helped to be great men are helped to be blessed if you ignore the spiritual assistance that we call empowerment God's token of his presence and might upon your life granting you access to possibilities that should not be affordable to you by human standards 
that's what it means to be empowered to be engraced with an energy with an ability that only God should have so that you command results that are not given to mere men and then the third is wealth there is no dominion without wealth it is true the wealth of the kingdom is an index that empowers the church to command dominion and when i talk of wealth i'm not talking of just cars and houses that's 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 not wealth that's just maybe a level of comfort but that, that's not what we're talking about at all we're talking of a dimension of divine supplies that can force any closed door that is shut by the economy of this world to be opened are we together now these are the forces among others there are many others that must be engaged in our lives and corporately as a body 90 percent listen please 90 percent of the pursuits of men and women on earth today is an attempt to make a meaning out of their lives to make a meaning to try to put ends together so a father is rushing to get a job and you ask him sir why are you so busy and he tells you look i need to get um school fees for my children i need to pay rent i need to do this and that and there's a businessman running and i mean helter skelter you wake up in the morning and you see people run from morning till night and you ask them what are you looking for and some say survival some say we're making ends meet and so on and so forth and you know there's there seems to be that contention everywhere left right and center please listen very carefully you see if you follow the way of the Lord please listen to me the Bible says there is a way that seemed right unto a man it could be a way that has been established by philosophy and the pride of men i hope you know men are arrogant it's what god has had to put up with us for many decades the the pride of men in spite of our ignorance it's amazing how arrogant men are and then at the end we have to turn back and say lord i need you how many times have people ignored god in the bible based on whatever they think or they thought was an advantage and they were forced to return to a point where they would call upon his name and acknowledge him so when life defines a pathway for you to follow listen carefully just because a crowd is following that pathway does not mean that way is right are you listening to me now the courage to walk with god is what many people do not have because this system wields a level of pressure on you this is how it is done this is how we make money this is how we become famous this is how we do this and you know that the holy spirit is telling you there is a way i can route your life and destiny such that you will do much in in so short a time and have the time to lift up the name of the lord and glorify him you see let me tell you something the system that was designed by satan was designed by a lot of intelligence the system was so designed that you must lose certain things when you follow it one of the things you must lose is joy one of the things you must lose is peace one of the things you must lose is God one of the things you must lose is everything God gave you so you you move and take that path and check my peace is gone where did it go to and Satan says continue going and then you find out my joy is gone and then you find out my relationship with God is gone. The, 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 the progression was designed to strip you of everything divine. And to reward your giving away these valuable things, you get stipends that you call success. You call stipends the accolades of men 
while they clap for you for getting a and b you have lost the things that really matter and after decades of moving in ignorance you will turn back and find out you really didn't have anything you were better off before you started following that path are we together now our world is full of very angry people look at the young people who are angry right now they turn back and look at their lives no money no joy no peace you have children as if you should kill them are we together now because you don't know what to do with them the needs are much they bring pta letter and you are angry you have a church you don't even know what to do it's not growing you go and copy a formula somewhere and say we must apply it this church must grow and you try it and nothing happens and you give your best and the members lash back at you and you turn and say god did you design this thing and god said i have no hand in this because jesus said i am the way listen carefully that you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it now but the challenge is this many believers do not have the fortitude to sit down and be correctly mentored to follow the path that will lead to life and power usually usually a combination i think of operations of darkness tampered with our pride the pride of men we hate being taught we want to show we know we we feel embarrassed when we are educated because it looks like it's an insult on our pedigree are we together now so usually we like suggestions but not to be taught and say look this way you are following is wrong let me tell you this i i say this with all humility i have watched people take steps and i already knew where they were going to end it's painful when you already know where a road is going and someone is still following it i have seen people take steps and make choices that i know the end of it is going to be disaster except the mercy of god intercepts somewhere in the way they are going to fail and they are going to fail woefully now this sounds like pride you see i've been saying this thing for many years i didn't just start saying it this system will never allow you serve god it's a promise i'm giving you you follow this system the world's way of doing things you will never live a meaningful life have you seen the rate at which people commit suicide someone would just hang himself and write a letter i hate life I was reading um, the, the online paper just today about a woman, I think somewhere in Nigeria, who killed her husband, killed the children, and killed herself. That's the way. High blood pressure used to be sickness for old people. But now you see teenagers having high blood pressure and you wonder what, <laughs> excuse me, what they are thinking about that's life for you and satan continues to manipulate the system to ensure number one that you never have time for god i hope you know that the number one attack of satan is your spiritual life listen to me carefully in that order when satan begins to launch an attack it doesn't matter where it comes from ultimately because if you can cut your ears away from the voice of god that's the supply of your life man shall not live by bread alone but by every word and if that word is cut away from you you have started dying even though alive every attack on your life has a way of routing to your spiritual life so the bible says we should be steadfast immovable are we together now to get to a point where you are solid that nothing will offend you that you will not find offense in god to say god i'm disappointed in you i will try another strategy i i i trusted you to do a and b in my life you have come to a point where your love for god is as solid as mount zion many people's spiritual lives have been attacked every day every time per second per second satan uses all the elements in this life poverty 
pain offense disappointment are we together delay all kinds of things and he keeps targeting your spiritual life and goodness is he getting at people rubbishing people so much you see everyone i'm trying to make ends meet um it's time for prayer prayer what please god is here let's 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 do this thing first and we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow because that was not the formula assigned to bring us rest there remained a sabbath for the people of god but until you walk with the holy spirit who is the lord of the sabbath to be able to guide you and show you the systems you must access let me tell you my brothers and my sisters men can find rest in experience do not allow the personal frustrations that you have faced on your journey to fulfillment and relevance make you believe that god is incapacitated no my life and your life can never be a perfect reflection of his capability. He doesn't bend to our standards. We must subscribe to conform to God's standard. If you are poor today, it's not a reflection of God's inability to bless. If you are not influential today, it's not a reflection of God's limitation. Are we together? If you are not anointed to a notable dimension, it's not a reflection of God's inability to reach you. There is somewhere in that equation you either do not understand or you are engaging wrongly. That's why we are here to learn, to be taught to be guided to see that there is a path that truly leads to death not spiritual death physical death but there is a path that leads to life is god speaking to someone already and so i just want to press on an issue with us that i think god would have me talk to us on tonight um so that we can have the time to serve god I title it it's a very brief message my cup runneth over I want to share with you the dominion systems that God has put to help men activate the supplies of heaven I pray pray for me that God will grant me grace to finish on time because I really want us to pray I want us to spend a few minutes praying the greatest distraction I have seen in the lives of believers is this issue of our daily bread. The issue of trying to make ends meet. And the rate at which believers are being distracted by the worries and the cares, especially as regards our needs. There has to be a system to address it. If not, a time will come when on sunday churches will be empty a time will come when you will organize crusades and you will find people saying look I, I have four jobs because i'm trying to make ends meet i my my child school fees has been increased to uh, by times five and i have to make sure ends meet god please wait when i make it i can come to you and if you disturb me i'll come with a seed and sow it to you Psalm 23. Lord, may this message bless your body in the name of Jesus. This is how I read this scripture. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leaded me beside the still waters verse 3 he restored my soul he leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake uh-huh yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table just leave that verse this is what we are dealing with tonight. Thou preparest a table, not a sword. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Here is the miracle. Thou anointest my head with oil. 
my cup runneth over may that be our testimony in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God that your cup will run over transgenerationally that you will get to a point where because of you it will be that you have brought light you have brought salvation and empowerment to your loved ones I believe that the greatest attack on the body of Christ will come in the area of divine supplies supplies for kingdom advance it is no news that God wants us to be able to have the level of overflow and abundance. And this is not in some carnal, um, self-centered way. No, we are talking kingdom here. Are we together? That it is the will of God, please listen very carefully, to bring us to a point by his grace where we access the supplies of heaven that can afford us the opportunity, listen carefully, to be able to spend our lives by spending our time serving the Lord. Remember the teaching that I did here on time. Certain things about time that we need to learn. That all that you have in life is time. Are we together now? That means whatever you give your time to, you have invested part of your life to. Are we together now? Yes. That our lives are time dependent and whatever you commit your time to is what you have given your life to and so Satan knowing the value of time has manipulated a system that compels the average person to commit most of his time on mundane pursuits so that we do not have time left to serve the purposes of the kingdom and advance the gospel and lift the name of the Lord. So it's not the issue of poverty or prosperity or abundance or lack. It's a fight for time. Satan is targeting your time, not your pocket. He's using your pocket to target your time because he knows that if he can create a system around your life, where God is not prioritized, he has captured you. The time of the average believer is spent worrying, is spent thinking of needs here and there. And I want to tell you categorically, it is not the will of God. You will never be able to serve the purposes of God that way. As a man of God, it's impossible to have the time to settle down and prepare a quality sermon well researched with prayer to bless people when there are all kinds of concerns where will we get the fuel for the generator where are we going to rent the keyboard many people lie as if it doesn't matter it does matter when your landlord comes knocking at your door you will be surprised to see how it will influence your prayer life are we together now that says and have you ever been in a situation that gave you concern you lost appetite has that happened to someone that you sat down you are not sick or you are fine but there's a plate of food in front of you and you cannot eat because you are worrying you wake up in the night and you are stressed out are you not seeing that death is killing us give us psalm 112 this is god's idea of a man of a family that is a true representation of his of his abundance and his supplies he says praise ye the lord blessed is the man that feared the lord take note one that man fears the lord number two he delighted greatly in his commands so that's the secret of that man that that man is blessed go back to verse one he is blessed because he fears the Lord and he delights greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. And then he says, The generation of the upright. That means that the impact of that man transcends a generation. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, Wealth and riches shall be where? Please talk to me believers that wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of that wealth and riches his righteousness endures 
now this is what you cannot get with satan if you ever get wealth and riches this way your righteousness will not endure because it will force you to dapple your hands in all kinds of things that by the time you are 10 years in that voyage you have lost so many things wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of it his righteousness endures the bible says that man is blessed he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands his seed his seed there is not just his children your seed is anything that comes out of you that his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and then he says his righteousness endures forever i have taught extensively on the systems of the kingdom that are allocated to bring supplies and to help believers to come into a point where we experience the abundance that gives us the time and the convenience to serve god are we together now uh, i've said it again that most of the issue when it has to do with the supplies of the kingdom wealth riches and abundance is that number one most people approach it from a carnal and ungodly perspective is is from a standpoint of lost so the entire exegesis around the subject of wealth is coming from a heart that is already depraved it's not a heart that truly wants to honor god it's just a heart that wants to grab and get and so it's largely a marketing of lust but that's not the way of God number two is that there is as I will always say an imbalance in the communication of the precepts that leads to it so we have preachers who communicate their ideas on what they believe is the kingdom system allocated the economic system of the kingdom and they give the best that they can communicate and then you find out largely that from many of those teachings the members don't prosper from it it is usually the preachers that prosper from it because the members appreciate the preachers for teaching them but they go back and since they themselves don't have congregations to appreciate them there is nothing for them to return home with and they are angry and frustrated and then they now begin to write all kinds of devilish things about the gospel and about men and women of God and then we have on the other side entrepreneurs and business people and all kinds of people who bring all kinds of ideas about wealth and that is wonderful and well-meaning but some of these things are a mix of of Scientology and some of it is even a mix of all kinds of ancient religions and things that reduce God to become energy and just reduces God to become a force just like many other forces so by the time you dwell and explore those things your conclusion about God would just be that God is some kind of sovereign energy in the cosmos who can do something to your brain and so on and so forth so there is largely an imbalance my question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven is God so wicked my brothers and my sisters that he will leave us in the dark and watch us move in pain and in the financial squalor that continues to press people down to a point where there is not enough even for our children it says if you have been evil know how to give good gifts to your children if you have been evil in the depravity of your heart yet you can create space for compassion to be able to look at your child and bless your child let me give you a guarantee i promise you in the name of the lord jesus christ if you listen to me you will never never be poor if you listen to me you will never be small it's a guarantee i give you in the name of the lord forgive me if i sound arrogant but it's true just pay attention to this thing don't 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 tamper with the equation when you don't have results get results first then you can say oh you are wrong i discovered another route this teaching is a symbol of god's mercy because there is a tsunami coming it has started it's sweeping everywhere and everything close to it 
and it's unfortunate that there are many believers that might be victims of this that we will never get to a point where we begin to eat our children do you know women ate their children in the bible to eat your children now doesn't mean to eat your child physically that you can mortgage the future and the destiny of your child so that you satisfy your hunger of today you have eaten your child many of our parents ate our destinies let me tell you the truth they ate our destinies in selfishness there are many people today in marriages they should not be but the parents say you must enter so that we will eat that's eating your child there are many people who should not be involved in certain things at all there are many pastors who should be in the field serving the lord they are somewhere roaming around forcing supplies to come from where it's not found i will never serve satan to feed my stomach i will never serve babylon to feed my stomach it's a vow that you must make that my entire life will be spent serving the purposes of the kingdom i will never serve the lord and quote scriptures and fall down under the anointing only to stand up and become a victim of a system that will define for me how much time and space i give god I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us and then we are going to pray hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord increase in the kingdom increase in the kingdom increase in this kingdom is a product of value write it down increase in the kingdom the greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable please listen very carefully the law of value your value defines your degree of usefulness please write it down your value defines your degree of usefulness the degree to which you are needed within a civilization within a sociological context the degree of your usefulness not just your uniqueness not just your skill you can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization the degree of your usefulness is what we call your value and god so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed listen carefully the supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value that when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven he does not just favor you as it were with giving you money but he brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes impossible to ignore you are we together now there are many ways he achieves that but that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable now but most people most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable it's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it there are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it they are valuable yet they are not rewarded is that true 
so what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow I've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you. It's true. Your value decides who pursues you. You know you are valuable by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace, on your skill, on whatever it is that you represent. Now, most believers will frown at what I'm saying. That's why they are poor. That's why they struggle. We pray, and that's very important. We study the word. We are faithful in church, but we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this qualoo of hardship. Many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency value in the area where value plays nothing will cover for it are we together now so your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness and i've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward it is not just because people are pursuing you the quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you. If a president needs you, you would be rewarded at the level and at the stature of a president. Is that true? Yes. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. No way. Because you are my God. The ever present help in time of need. You are. that when you become valuable you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory it will bring glory to you it will bring glory to your family you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable pegged at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored Pegged at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential. That you rise to a point where not gender, not geographic limitations, cultural barriers, etc. That none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you. That's value value is not that you have something that is is being biased by loyalty so i have something that only my tribes people patronize and they're only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that now they, oh you are from this state and okay let's come and buy this no when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life where regardless of what else is not important in your life people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry you are valuable it was said about Jesus all men seek for you not some not Yoruba people seeking for a Yoruba man not Igbo people seeking for an Igbo man not northern people seeking for a northern man this is largely what we call value in our world 
so if i have value now i just quickly go and look for my people and say i'm the son of the soil your boy has come with this if you leave me like that and so we have a crowd of people it is it's largely just ethnocultural but that god put something in your life my brothers and my sisters that will cause all men regardless of value nobody will ever ask you where you come from they don't care whether you are male or female nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand nobody cares whether once you are tested to the point of death you say let me have that water whether it was made by a child or an adult the moment people create certain factors to demean you you are not valuable enough if any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you then you are not valuable if you listen to what i am telling you your children will bless you tomorrow years ago the holy spirit would tell me pay attention and let me make you valuable i didn't understand the extent of what he was saying oh today i'm grateful there is no magic that is going to happen in your finances let me repeat there is no magic that is going to happen in your finances if you do not trust god to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable i give you a guarantee in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god as far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned you will live a frustrated life it's a matter of time and i'm not talking of business here or a job here <clears throat> leave all those things first you see it is your value that gives life to those things they don't give life to you many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the holy spirit in our lives is not just to help us know god it's not just to help us walk in character the holy ghost upgrades men he came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable the bible says jesus increased in wisdom listen carefully jesus increased in stature jesus increased in favor with god and with men the holy ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God no sir is God speaking to us tonight value when your world comes to you they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands that you are going to exchange for the reward they have you are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you when no amount becomes that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say i was stupid for dropping one million i just came i know pastor alpha is anointed but ah, ah, one million what entered me no when nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where god is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole i guarantee you you will not beg for bread i hope god is speaking to you you see i love you that's why i'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him then make sure you don't have children make sure that you 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 are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives do you know how many well-meaning believers who love god are still asking god questions still today lord this is unfair my father was a pastor my mother was a pastor i'm a preacher i love you with all my heart what is all this one that i'm seeing now 90 percent of the discussion in homes is money finance madam what are you bringing you are hiding money from me the man says you are, you are you know and all kinds of things and god is watching he's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time have you seen families doing devotion in the morning and the father stops say what, what devotion are you doing and he picks a scripture by himself just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources and devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel 
a lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money and you see the truth is that except God shows you the way out otherwise this thing will press you one day you will touch what you should not touch hello please talk to me don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man when you are pressured to a point where you are pushed to the wall you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make we are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the whether they wanted to give the person a job god is my witness but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay two hundred and fifty thousand naira before they will get the job i said so do you have the money he said no she was whether i think it was a she coming to just say if i can if god can use me i said no god doesn't use me for those kind of things god does not use me for those kinds of things now it's easy to criticize them and say you mean you love god and you are doing that until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat it's a cause it's not the will of god imagine for instance that i tell them to give me a bucket now and while i'm preaching i just i just say if the bucket comes close to you there's something written on the bucket just read it and do whatever it says look at how your mind everything i'm saying would just go down because i'm passing a bucket you look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say what is all this again but do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of jesus the name of jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up did you hear what i said the name of jesus is not a feather you throw it's heavy it will take the shoulder of priests to take it up. It's easy to accuse men of God around. Oh, I like koinonia. They don't ask us to give anything. We just come and enjoy. We enjoy free dinner and they pay money. And we, I like this kind of ministry. Other pastors should be like that. Uh -uh. Don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters. If God does not show you the key to this gate, you will stand there and almost die. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in our of you. You will never walk in integrity if you don't have supplies i guarantee you in the name of the lord you will never walk in integrity life will push you to a point where you must compromise you will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago because you have found out that in that message now can come a way of helping your belly value now but you see the value listen carefully my brothers and my sisters just being valuable is not enough you must ensure that that value is needed and useful within the context of your civilization this is as simple as it is that your value must be needed listen pastor come let's assume you are selling this and i don't need it now i'm passing you have this i'm just giving an example yet i don't need it will i reward you are you valuable is your value useful to me no do i need it no so you will still suffer 
although you are valuable that's what is happening to many of us there is almost nobody here that i know who has not recognized something that is valuable and just because we found it we start rejoicing and we believe life should just come and bless us no sir there is a standard that demands reward because the me who is moving around me too i'm looking for something with my resources and until i find the person with that something to the standard i consider rewardable that is the only condition for releasing things it's not enough to be valuable your value must first be needed and useful second your value must be translated to a form where it is served with excellence excellence that relates to every level of mental development did you hear what i just said that your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence and excellence that can be able to be satisfying to any kind of level that means that the value you provide and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class that level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price are we together now so there are many of us who are doing things but that what we are doing i give you an instance our daddy is a prof here are we together now now if you are a graduate they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough you have not graduated enough to sit there so the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate enough the question there is enough to the standard are we together now the person who takes last in a race I hope you know he has a time too that he finished but he did not finish at enough time to get the gold medal the question is not that they finished the question is there is a time allocated and whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the gold so it's not enough to say you are valuable as a man of god let me come back to ministry because many of you as and leave all those things let's talk ministry so let me talk ministry as a man of god it's not enough to be called You can be called you can feel anointed in fact quite honestly you can be anointed but is it to the level that can bless the people who God told to bless you because for every destiny helper there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you God can tell me or God would have put in my spirit to give pastor Alpha a car provided he heals my mad child are we together provided he does what not provided he prays in my house the condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house so i'm anointed i know scriptures and i come to the house and i roam around and i just pray and at the end of it they just thank me they put malt in a bottle with straw and they put donut and they escort me with it outside and i go it's not that god did not send them your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you that means when i sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me god is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers so that their resources can now come to me are you getting what i'm saying now listen very carefully everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today your level of grace has not risen enough to call them that's why they are shifted to your tomorrow if you enter that level of grace today they will come today I look at my life today and I see what people do to me and I'm almost tempted to ask where were you where were you when I was sucking ginger inside a straw and I was a believer are we together when I was trekking to first bank without money in my account by faith 
hoping that I will get miracle alert. Now you are receiving it free. It's just coming. There was a price. God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match until you are lifted to the level that matches it. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard. Are we together now? That means Pastor Alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the Lord will say, Kai, build one of my servants a house. Why don't they think about you? Because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house. Now, remember, they know you are called, but they think it's unfair. They believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact, kingdom impact, and the spirit of God by himself will take their minds to those people and say that's the man you should bless please believe what I'm telling you yes we've had people my brothers and my sisters I, I say this to the glory of God we've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to Koinonia not for the program travel with seeds and they said they sat down and agreed either as a business enterprise and say no since we love God and before we started this business we agreed that God should grant us grace so that we will bless others and they leave their cities take flights go through the rigor of coming to Zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle we want to sow into koinonia and we want to continue and you ask them why and the man will say I listen to one message say value not message say value but that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man so the man listened to a message and as he listened to the message he fell asleep and in that sleep the message continued and Jesus stepped in the Jesus he fasted for two months to see he didn't see but he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter he would look for that person and reward him that was why Nicodemus looked for Jesus even in the night he traced him the Bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there but I'm convinced he came with honorarium It's just my thinking. It's just my simple thinking. Forgive me if I sound arrogant. But there are some of you as you are seated right now. There are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket. You are waiting for us to share the grace. So you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life. Now I'm sorry that I'm the one saying this and I'm not by any way manipulating you. But it's the truth. Now you are thinking, how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seed to a man? Whereas you beg the same person why he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare. Are you seeing how it is? There is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence. As a man of God, nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study the truths that you communicate must the impact of that word must be felt in the lives of the people when it is done clear the way for the rewards that will come now you don't preach because of money don't get me wrong however it is important Possible, my brothers and my sisters to be valuable to serve that value with excellence whether you sell it or give it free you must be rewarded it's a law by the grace of God and the privilege of God's hand God has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread my children will never beg for bread even if I give bread to them and go to be with the Lord 
because people have been raised and wisdom is justified by her children your value has not raised anyone yet you want life to reward you you see how unfair it is just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value from it's amazing how your relatives will not give you money but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of God to pass so they will drop money you beg them for rent they didn't give you yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed nobody really blesses a needy person they bless valuable people you must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value that even if you don't have money in your pocket you can say in the name of jesus i'm coming for koinonia there is an anointing that is coming i'm not falling for nothing every time i fall i rise upgraded in the spirit and a day will come i will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain to the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the pharisees they said no this guy is stealing the show if we don't do something about him he will destroy us koinonia let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you are gathered here every week by the grace of god because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life it's a formula that is unbendable you would hear testimonies here you would hear testimonies every week that the word produce results nobody leaves what works did you hear what i'm saying nobody leaves what works no sir the world does not have too many things that are working so the options are few there are not too many things working in this life so when you find what works you stay and pay whatever price it takes to stay that's why the presence of god is 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 is, is a is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever because you see the presence of god does not just make you heaven bound it makes you valuable it truly does look at my life the presence of god that's where you find the anointing so while i'm worshiping in his presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love you think i'm just wasting time singing but while i'm singing and worshiping in his presence there is an elevation in the spirit a new anointing son you have this anointing and that but you don't have this one let me introduce this in your life and i'm there just worshiping the same way you are typing the letter in your office me too I'm, I'm 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 doing all of that the same way you are reading for a promotion exam and all of a sudden i step out and i see a grace that was not upon me yesterday now the grace has come meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings i love i love i love your presence I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, Shalabakato Saladash. I love your presence. I love, I love. Listen. forget about bringing a valuable person down you don't know how needy this world is until they find true value all this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke when you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God only God can bring that person down I'm telling you this koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory it's not just some recitation the formula has been given the scroll is not closed the seals have been broken it's been opened we have seen it with our eyes 
the things men do not have how could they resist it an anointing is not sold in the market an anointing is not stored in a bank the government does not have it so how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of upon the life of a man and then assume it's not there your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it listen you are seated now in this place to some of you you are attending a service I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders some of you travel from far you just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say let us pray fire and you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say what is this what is going on here and everybody descends they will stop calling you brother immediately they, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit let me tell you this it's good to know how to cook it's good to know how to do business but my brothers and my sisters be anointed this is real value be anointed have something upon you that no man can buy the same way you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth he said thou anointest my head give us that scripture you did not anoint my cup the goal is for my cup to run over but the oil came on my head and the result showed in my cup it takes more than a good profession to prosper it takes more than a good skill to prosper there is only so much reward you can get from that angle ah but when his hand comes upon you blessed is the man that my God finds and puts grace upon you your life will be a wonder you will you will walk upon gold as dust I'm telling you this listen let me tell you all these money money things you see people chase around most people don't have any money they just have enough to solve their basic needs so they look rich they are poor And yet that's what distracts a lot of people but when you stand say lord put something in my life put something upon me i i don't know why people don't pray that prayer oh god shorten my journey i don't have time shorten my journey let there be an anointing on my profession listen 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 come emeka you are a doctor come watch this we're going to pray this gentleman is a doctor when someone is sick they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever now your profession does not determine who you bless the anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient you see now that one is not mbbs again that one is the anointing influencing your possibilities so a day that no doctor is around the billionaire comes and the Holy Ghost, not your profession, pushes you there. You have a restaurant, you are a chef, congratulations. But not being anointed, you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever. They will finish eating and then back in and say, I don't have 10 naira, I don't have 15 naira. But when the anointing comes upon it, the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie just when a politician is there and he says i'm looking for someone there is a meeting and he says ah my daughter is here that one is no longer your skill that one is a grace from heaven that comes upon men listen you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture mighty exegesis of scripture and they keep inviting you to different places wonderful you will be blessed but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace that grace is what will take your seed your message whatever you represent to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry how would i have risen from zaria here 
how many public address structures do you have i'm not on facebook i'm not on any social media as a person it's not everything that is just good preaching it's not everything that is just mm -mm. there is an anointing that announces it's called an oil of gladness it can take men and make you above your fellows please listen the financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men a time will come where you will see people i'm not i'm not i'm not a, a sadist but a time will come where everything you have every other person has it you are educated they are educated and then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director what then is your advantage there are things when you have only the rich look for you there are things when you have only the poor look for you there are things when you have only sick people look for you there are things you have only those in need of legal issues look for you there are things when you have only hungry people look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek for you all men all men god designed it that way so when jesus was about to start his ministry having done everything he did the bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there 40 days 40 nights fasting and he returned in the power of the spirit and then acts chapter 10 tells us how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power the bible says he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed something humorous happened today i i have never been to shiloh as a person and i was just sitting today and all of a sudden i got a text the pastor in charge of registering pastors in shiloh sent a text to my phone and said man of god are you coming we want to arrange your reservations and this i said what is this now listen i'm just saying it to encourage you i don't know that man from adam are we together now yet there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying you will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief they will say please join the members or sit in the overflow listen once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door go back don't force yourself just go back when you try to enter as a pastor you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying mr man we invited a b not you will consider you one day stop making a mockery of yourself go back to the secret place and say where is the god that puts oil on the head of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when what comes upon great men comes upon you there is no door that will remain closed thou anointest my head with oil is someone ready to pray tonight this is the value that i brought for you that if you if god grants you access to the anointing and you can serve that anointing with excellence there is no door listen you don't have to leave your profession it just needs to be anointed many of us are educated but our certificates are not anointed many of us are skilled but your skill needs to be anointed i'd like you to find a corner our time is gone for the next five or ten minutes worship team just set the atmosphere for us find a place and blast in tongues and pray in the spirit and cry to god and say lord you are the giver of all good things you don't withhold good things Lord, put something upon my life. Place an anointing upon my head that will answer to the needs of kings, that will answer to the needs of nobles. Place an anointing upon my degree. Place an anointing upon my masters. Place an anointing upon my PhD, oh God. Place an
an anointing upon my profession. I am a lawyer, but only an educated one. Can you put an anointing upon my legal practice? Your usefulness amplified by the presence of the anointing. Worshippers pray, Lord, I can sing. I have written songs, but let an anointing come upon my song, so called. Lord, I'm a businessman. It is true that I've paid my price. Doing well, learning the principles of business. But let an anointing come upon the value that I provide. Outside, make sure you're praying. Overflow, make sure you're praying. Now anointest my head with oil. Shabakatokata. My business overflows. My ministry overflows. My church overflows. Thou anointed my head with oil. Favor overflows. Thou anointest my head with oil. My career explodes. Thou anointest my head with oil. Koinonia, pray. You are opening the gates of greatness. Pray. Lord, let your anointing announce me. Let your anointing announce the gift of God upon my life. Shaka takata. Come on, prayer warriors, pray. Pray like a priest. Embra koto shake te le koto ke shake ta. Embra keto kasana makata. Reke te koto shake te le koto masia. Pray. to mention whatever it is that you do whether it's your job whether it's your business and say lord let your anointing and your fire come upon it and let there be an explosion from the left to the right lift your voice and pray if you are in ministry pray over the work god has put in your hand lord it's time to take the power the glory of god to the nations it's time for the gates of ministry to be opened for the sake of the gospel as a businessman, it's time to rub minds with the great. Lift me by your anointing, O God. Your certificate can give you a job. It will take the anointing to rise. to pray a serious prayer lord by the anointing on my life take away poverty and hardship lift your voice and pray if there is an anointing on my life then there is a demand for it let the anointing 
of my life roll away financial reproach let the anointing upon my life activate divine supply by the ministry of destiny help us that it will be a privilege for men to arise and answer to the cause of my people I tell you Hallelujah Look at me Look at me, we are praying There is an anointing That works like perfume Isaac used it and said My son Is like a field I place something upon my son that makes him to begin to smell like a field that the Lord has blessed that means you pass and that aura attracts you have you seen people you just like and honestly there is nothing there is no reason you just look at them and you go out of your way to ask questions what are you doing in Zaria I just came do you have a place to stay and you too you are wondering the smell when the woman broke the alabaster box the Bible says the perfume filled the room there is there is this plant they call queen of the night that's the name I think is that true and once it's night when other plants are sleeping that plant just takes over the entire atmosphere the anointing is smellable you can be within a vicinity and the spirit of someone begins to know ah, this man is here let me go and see this pastor I say I knew it I knew you are there hold on wait for me and the person will go and bring something I like you to pray the fragrance of your glory Lord let it smell my life that as I walk my life becomes a walking miracle to pray two more prayer points i like you to cry and say lord i am the one who will break the cycle of hardship in my entire lineage there are many of us here listen listen let me tell you the truth you will be a wicked person if you don't think of your children the power of god is here i sense a strong anointing i like you to pray that the grace upon your life will crush hardship once and for all over your family lift your voice and pray
says John was anointed from the womb listen until that time they never named anybody John so they wanted to give him a name an identity like what was the status quo but when the angel came you see that Zechariah wanted to corrupt the destiny of someone who was going to be the greatest of all prophets according to the mouth of the Lord and the, the father's mouth was shut so that the destiny be preserved listen when you do uncommon things uncommon men come to you when you do common things common men come to you you are going to pray lord anoint me for unusual things unusual dimensions unusual ministry unusual business unusual medical practice it has to be unusual no table they said that a notable miracle had happened lift your voice lord an unusual prophet an unusual apostle an unusual evangelist an unusual caterer an unusual chef come on pray an unusual IT consultant an unusual doctor an unusual professor dimensions of the workings of the spirit unusual dimensions unusual dimensions hallelujah listen let me tell you this I shared with you years ago that a man of God was praying for me and that man said something that disturbed me I went to sow a seed to him and he said oh Lord create a problem that only him can solve I, I, I thought that was selfish when you talk of kingdom kingdom is not a thing of competition and the rest but he said he may have prayed his prayer whether I believe it or not it was later as i began to grow that i understood that ah he was not being selfish he was just saying lord distinguish him put him in a level let me tell you rehoboth means god has given me my space there is your space in life that you dig a well they can come and close it but there is a space in ministry there is a space in business you're going to pray one prayer lord allocate my space and keep me there a space that is beyond competition beyond contention there are names that when you call on earth there is no basis for comparing them there are names when you call in ministry in business in family life they are outstanding they are in a class of their own your father god is in a class of his own cannot be compared with any other god Listen. I met I just returned from a trip and I met a particular music minister and he came to me and hugged me I said oh I've been blessed by your songs I'm happy to see you now and he looked at me he said apostle this is not the first time you're meeting me I said really he said in 2012 I was in a meeting I was nobody you called me out and prophesied to me and 
I said, I did. He said, yes. That you prophesied to me that the wells of worship, the fountain, will begin to rise. And that from that time, his life had moved forward. And while we were in the meeting, the Lord spoke to him, to him again. And I told him, I said, you are going to write just one song. One that will surpass what your songs have done again. It doesn't take too many things to lift you. Just one noise by the hand of God. There was one earthquake. Bam! What did Ben Carson do to be great? Just one surgery and that was it. When you call all the music ministers in this nation, it's usually one song. Many songs they wrote, but one song. Bishop T.D. Jakes wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose, till today, no other book has brought him that kind of reward. Dr. Miles Munro had written so many books, bestsellers, but when he wrote Rediscovering the Kingdom, that one book was a game changer. Please, can we borrow one more minute and say, Lord, what is the one thing that will announce me by your grace? Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, what is the one song? Lord, as a man of God, what is the one meeting? The one meeting that will announce my grace? As a doctor, who is the one patient? that I will treat and get out of poverty forever. One thing is needful. One thing, one thing. Pray, Koinonia. There is a God that answers. One encounter when he had with Jesus changed his life. One encounter with Catherine Kuhlman changed his life. One encounter we are still praying, Lord, what is the one thing, the one dimension? Who do I need to prophesy to for my life to change? Whose body must be healed through my hands? What is the one meeting that will announce your grace upon my life? What is that one publication that the nations will hear? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think it was last year, last year or early this year, I had the privilege of flying with Professor Wole Soinka. And when I got into the aircraft, he was sitting on my seat. And I looked at him. I was standing face to face with a Nobel laureate. Very simple looking. And I thought about this thing again. It's not many things that lift people. They wanted to walk him so that I said, no, 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 you can't do that. This is a great man. I use it as an opportunity to practice the law of honor. Say, please keep him there. Just find whatever seat for me and let me sit. Why will I walk him up? Whereas I aspire that the world hear God's voice through me too. One thing. Have you not seen that great men are only lifted by one thing? If David didn't kill Goliath, he will continue to eat sheep meat till he dies there in the wilderness. The head of Goliath brought him a wife. The head of Goliath made him and his family tax free. The head of Goliath made him a king. One thing. One thing Jesus did, die on the cross, and he resurrected and was enthroned as king. Listen, I know our time is gone, but you are going to cry this one thing. Listen, for some of you, it may not be one thing, it may be one encounter with one person. We have a number of our worshippers here. This young man, Gashina, where is he? He's praying. This gentleman, it was one of his songs just one of his songs that nathaniel bassi received one of his songs and this song just exploded this gentleman's ministry hallelujah sometimes you just need one encounter i'm saying this to you 
I've shared with you my experience with Jesus. It's not that I was not doing, I was not doing bad. I was already working in a measure of signs and wonders and this. But one solid encounter. Not this nonsense around that people say encounter with no proofs. Solid encounter where you meet the power of God. Apostle Babalola was roaming around in a forest. When fire fell on his head from that forest. One encounter and changed his life. Archbishop Benson Idahosa, it was one encounter that turned his life and announced him. Bishop Oyedeko, one encounter, an 18 hour vision changed his life. Papa Ia Deboye, one encounter turned his life around. You don't need 10. Lord, what is the encounter? What is the idea? What is the song? Release it, cry and say, Release it. Call on to me and I will answer. One encounter with the healing anointing will take you beyond the shores of this nation. One encounter with the prophetic grace will open you up to dimension. One conference that God will grant you access to rise to will lift you and take you high. I stretch my hands and I pray for you in the name of Jesus the fire that must fall on your life to shift you to the next level I stretch my hands receive that fire from heaven now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare where your reward system has become limited may you be upgraded to a higher dimension in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Listen, I speak to you. If you are a ministry here, I stretch my hand. I'm telling you, it's time for men of fire to arise. This lukewarm, talkative thing around will continue to mock us. We need people that know God and can prove His power and His grace. This is what will change the society. All this grammar up and down will not do much. You need to bring God to... The Bible says the Word became flesh. I speak to you the kind of encounters that must put fire in your spirit may that fire fall on you in the name of Jesus any man of God here any minister of the gospel here and those following online you have been pegged at a level of result only certain miracles happen only certain results happen in the name of jesus enter a new dimension a new dimension in the spirit and i pray for you in the name of jesus the orchestrations that must make you collide with the doors of the next season of your life we declare by the spirit of wisdom may God coordinate those orchestrations and make them happen for you in the name of Jesus listen for some of you this grace will start waking you up in the night you will be surprised that at specific times sleep will leave you not forever but for a period of time because it is through those prayer times that a solid encounter that's when you will see a real angel for the first time not not lying and saying this and that no daniel was praying after 21 days an angel came there are some of you by reason of that prayer god will lead you to certain bookshops you will see an old book that was written by one general nobody knew 
you will buy that book and sit down and that's when the fire of your destiny will come upon you value encounters don't trivialize them encounters are, are the things that create conviction this our generation doesn't have conviction at all we just say everything and don't believe it he said that which our eyes have seen that which our ears have heard that which our hands have handled even of the word of life that's what we preach I pray for you encounters with Jesus there are some of you here I speak in the name of Jesus may the king of kings himself visibly walk to your rooms in the name of Jesus may God open you up to these encounters you will start having supernatural encounters encounters with the angelic encounters with the spirits of just men encounters with Jesus himself in the name of Jesus Christ For as long as we continue to fool ourselves that our finances are at the mercy of a lot of mundane things the ease factor is the anointing the ease factor is the anointing when all is said and done please get solid power in your life doesn't matter whether you are called into ministry or not For the Lord sets you free. That's what I hear in my spirit. The Lord sets you free. I sense an anointing coming upon you. And the Lord says, set them free. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I set you free right now. I set you free right now. I declare by the power of the highest that you are free. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be free, I see like a box. Going round and round, both of you, I command, you are free now. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Your son name is Ezekiel. Son name, Ezekiel. Please listen attentively now as the Holy Spirit calls out people. Your son name is Ezekiel. Where is that person inside and outside? Your son name is Ezekiel. When you get the person, let them come. There is a word for them. Ezekiel. Hallelujah. I'm seeing something in someone's head. I don't know if it's a brain tumor or something. Do we have anyone here with something that has to do? I mean, from the hospital, they've told you something. I don't know what it is, but I see a white substance in someone's. I don't know what it is, an injury, whatever it is. Do we have someone like that? Please come quickly. Ali Bosch. Sorry about the light, you'll be back in a minute. Above your kingdom The Lord sets you free. You believe that? You believe that? This is not all. This is not all. The Lord is communicating to you. Please let's hurry up. There's no room to waste time. 
We have to be really, really fast about this. Hallelujah. As I pray for you, I want you to believe that the Lord will set you free. Are you listening to me? Believe that the Lord will set you free. Let me start with mommy. In the name of Jesus, I challenge whatever issue it is be made whole now in the name of Jesus be made whole even by the spirit in the blessed name of Jesus Christ hold my hands look at me, look at me look at me, just look at me keep your eyes fixed on me come out of him now in the name of Jesus Light is shining in the darkness. Come, Jesus, He loves. Just hold my hands again and look at me. Just keep your eyes fixed on me. In the darkness, Jesus. I set you free now. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I command total, total wholeness to you. Receive it now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it now, perfection. I release it to you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Perfection, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a man on a stretcher. Looks like um, he's a man from Benway State or so on a stretcher being sick if that is a case that you relate with I like you can come as a man on a stretcher from Benway State is that correct who oh, please can we have a mic hallelujah who is that to you just he's an elderly man in the village he's from Benway State You've been trusting God for his healing yes, sir. and you've prayed about it again and again. Yes, the Lord brings healing to him right now. Can you receive for him? Yes, All right, lift up your hands. Lord, let it flow now. Receive it to him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command perfection and wholeness even by the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Agnes. Your name is Agnes. Your name is Agnes. Do we have any Agnes here? I'm hearing Agnes. Please, if we call your case, I'd like you to hurry up and, and let's save time. Hallelujah. Are you the only one? The only one bearing the name Agnes? Because I see more than one person in the vision that the Lord shows me. Agnes Hallelujah She's not the only one The Lord is still telling me she's not the only one Why are you staying back? Please when we call the case hurry up Hallelujah The Lord says I should tell you Remember not the former things Nor consider the things of old He said for behold I do a new thing Behold, I do a new thing. That's what God is saying. I should tell you, behold, I do a new thing. Especially over your family, the Lord is doing a new thing. Over their finances, they've gone through lots of challenges. Is, does that make sense to you, what I'm saying? Is that correct? Hallelujah. God is saying, I'm stepping in in a way that um, will cause many to wonder. And is bringing perfect restoration, even by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, confirm your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please go back. 
um, your father is a your father is a businessman I see him holding cartons he does any business that relates to maybe packaging or goods someone here your father is a businessman I see a man holding a carton I don't know what that means but something that relates to that is there anyone please very quickly your father is in business what does he do is the mic is down he sells motorbikes how about you he sells goods he sells goods yes. in a carton yes, sir. did he lose anything yes, sir. he lost his company he lost his company yes. the lord says i should tell you that he is restoring and he will overturn Amen. are you listening to me the Lord says I should tell you that he's restoring he will overturn and he's going to restore you believe that I see him holding a carton the Lord is going to restore even by his spirit you believe that you believe that both of you lift your hands even as you receive from your um, family members hold on look at me my dear did your father pick up a quarrel with anyone you may not know but it's a serious um, I see that there's an issue between your father and someone. You received, please let the mic be on. Some technical people can hear. I just received a call today about uh, ten a.m. in the morning. My ten a.m. in the morning. Yes, my oh. mom called me. That's all because my dad is going for a counselorship course. So that the young man walked up to him and I said he's going to deal with him. That is just looking at him. He doesn't know where to start with. Yes, I, I see I see your father will quarrel with someone and I hear conspiracy. Conspiracy. But you must also tell your father what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness. That's God's word for your father. And what communion has light got to do with darkness. For he that breaks the hedge, the serpent will strike. Tell your father. He must walk in total righteousness to see God's result. But Lord, we pray that you preserve the Father. And for you, I command and I decree that the restoration is perfect and is permanent in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. I see God restoring um a Kaduna family. You are from um, the southern part, Zango Kataf, specifically. Now, hold on. Don't just jump out because you are from there. There are many people, I believe, that are from here. Um, you are four in your family. That's what God shows me. You are four in your family. And um, I see that one of you in the family has had a a recurrent disease or something like that please who is that if this fits the word for you i'd like you to come out now a family uh, from kaduna the lord is giving this is very specific you can't guess if it's you if it's not you just sit back hallelujah four in your family one is sick from zangon kataf so hallelujah do we have anyone like that the lord wants to minister to that family you're the one please keep the mic on technical let the mic remain on it's Gloria. She had to travel with her family. To oh, she had to travel but, but that's that's that that's that's yes I see that um okay well I'm aware that her dad is sick and um but then god is bringing a restoration for the family god is restoring and um i see i see like um an earthquake that's what i'm seeing i'm seeing right now an earthquake you see that too i wrote it in my book is yes there? that's what i'm seeing an earthquake and uh, a disaster but the lord averts it by his spirit the lord averts it by his spirit Hallelujah. Can you stand in for her? Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that by the spirit and the authority of the king standing in for her, we command that restoration through you to her right now. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. Barista is not around. I wish he were around because there is a word that the Lord gives me for him. I hope that when we meet, we'll be able to communicate it to him. I see an elderly woman. Um, you are not among those in front here, but you are an elderly woman. You came, you are at the back. Um, you've suffered, you've had pains in your back. Serious back pain. Please, who is that? I'm seeing an elderly woman. She suffered serious back pain. And you've been saying, Lord, I'm coming with an expectation. Oh, yes, he is ready and willing to heal. For he is able, more than able, to accomplish. Hallelujah. I'm hearing Rose. Is there any one of you who is Rose or you're related to anybody called Rose? Rose. Is there anyone? I'm hearing the name Rose. Rose. I don't know what God wants to do with the name Rose, but my mom is suffering from a back pain right now, and my elder sister's name is Rose. I didn't know there are so many people with the name Rose. The Lord just gave me the name Rose. I love the intelligence of the spirit. For it is not by power, it's not by might, but by the spirit of God. All the ladies rose, please lift your hands. There will be the breath of the highest upon you. And it will set you on fire for the king. At the count of four, the power of God will come strong upon the ladies with the name Rose. One, two, three, four. The ladies with the name Rose. An impartation upon you even by the Spirit. A strong impartation upon you. A strong impartation upon you. Even by the Spirit. For one of you, you are being healed of a menstrual crisis. It goes forever. Goes forever. Hallelujah. Back pain. My, my stomach is very hot. Yes, I was feeling it. But later on, I feel it very hot inside. Yes. Is the anointing of the Spirit upon you? Please hold my hands, madam. Let the back pain go. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the back pain go. The power of God is coming strong upon you. Back pain. Just back here, brother. Not worse. Just hold my hands, madam. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I challenge that pain. Go. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be gone. The power of God is flowing through you. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Please help me pray for you. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. All the roads you can go back. Check yourselves. I see one of you being healed um, from something that has to do with your spine. One of you is healed. Back pain. The side to the back. By the, the back. Okay, by the side. The side and the back. Mommy, the power of God sets you free. Oh, because of your generosity, the power of God sets you free. In the name of Jesus, the power of God sets you free. Every pain. I command you to disappear right now. 
by the power that is in the name of Jesus. You are made whole right now in the name of Jesus. You are standing in for your mother. She has back pain. Where exactly? In the name of Jesus, I take authority over that back pain. Be made perfected right now in the name of Jesus. Perfection given by the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a heart condition. Um, someone has a problem with the heart condition. It's been long. It's been, you are aware of it. You've been told growing up a heart situation. Please, who is that? You came here full of expectation. It's time for the Lord to set you free. A heart condition. What's, what's the situation? Um, they call it... Um, it's been since 300 level first semester. Since 100 level, I've been having it. But then I can't remember. The anointing the of the Spirit is strong on you. Yes, sir. <laughs> the power of God is so strong on you. You are standing on hold And I know that there angels all around hallelujah the lord is setting you free what's it called again sorry this 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 that's all right look at me just look at me the lord will set you free right now. You believe that? Please come. He'll touch you. It's not Joshua Selma. He'll touch you. And oh, hey, what's what's wrong? Wrong? Out of him now in the name of Jesus. Christ. I command perfection by the Spirit. Something perfection that has perfection. Go. serious with the Lord. The Lord calls you by this meeting tonight into a place of intimacy. You cannot mix fresh water and salt water. It's time for you to go all out for God. You want me to pray for you? Yes, sir. That the Lord will put a hunger for his word in you? Yes, sir. I'd like to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray a hunger in him. Let an anointing come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, set him on fire for you. You will never be the same again in the name of Jesus Christ. My uncle is due to Indian for operation. Operation? Yeah, in his heart. And it's like they implanted a clock also inside. It's always ticking when you're close to him. You hear it ticks. A clock? By the doctors? As in you hear the heart oh, it, ticking. It, yeah. Oh, a clock, a clock in his heart. Yeah. By who? That's not how God designed them. Um, okay. Bible says, whatever has not been planted by my father will be uprooted. Lord, we take authority over every planting. We abolish it now by faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection for your own home. In the name of Jesus. The doctor could not predict what it was. Hold on. Sorry? The doctor could not predict what, the, what was exactly wrong with me, but he was like, it was asthma. Asthma caused the word um, asthma. symptoms of asthma, but at the same time he was confused if it was asthma or not. Doctors are wonderful people, but you see, 
there is only so much they can do and it's not their fault but look at me just shout Jesus once as loud as you can That's the name that is above every other name. Totally free by the Spirit of God. Totally free by the Spirit of God. You are for heart condition? No, in case of my uncle. Your uncle? What's wrong with him? They say that an insect or a worm in his heart. You see how wicked Satan is? For, for many of you who just laugh and think Satan is your friend, let me tell you something. There is no goodness in him. Satan is so wicked. How can an insect, or what do you call it, an insect, in your uncle's heart? What kind of thing is that? You believe he's going to be healed right now? You're standing in for him. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command, lay your hands on your chest. Amen. See, the power of God is strong on you. See your hands. You're standing in for him. Just breathe in and out three times. Just do it. Breathe in and out. The power of God comes on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear, what's wrong? Asthma. Asthma. You have asthma? Okay, um, we're going to pray for the asthmatic patient before I give the ministers a room to just minister and then we'll pray. Every one of you is going to be touched by the power of God tonight. Asthma. But since you came out, the Lord responds to your faith. Um, you're going to be healed right now and you check yourself, okay? My dear, please lay your hands on her chest if you will. Look at me. Open your eyes. Don't miss your miracle. You don't need to meditate. Two of us should not pray. Just watch. I'll do the prayer. Okay? Uh, look at me. Just breathe in and out. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out again. Do it one last time. <laughs> You're free now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Totally free. Even by the Spirit of God. What do you have? I actually just remembered my cousin now. Your cousin? Yes, sir. Okay, what's wrong with him? She is uh, suffered. She has suffered uh, of this heart disease for the past uh, three years now. Thirty-three years? No, three years. Oh, three years. She has been coming to Shika all okay. the way from home. Okay. And uh, last year, she had to travel to India, India. two times for, for surgery. Surgery. Okay. But she went there, and they couldn't discover exactly what was wrong with the heart then. You're standing in for her. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, perfection over her heart right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, perfection by the Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you? Asthma. You have asthma. Okay, I'm going to pray for asthmatic people. You don't have to come out. But since how long has it been? Over one and a half years. When? Two years ago. Two years. How old are you now? You are 14. For the past 12 years, you've had asthma. Two. Oh, for the past two years, he's had asthma. Okay. As well, let me pray with you. You believe Jesus will heal you? You believe it? Lay one hand on your chest if you will. Jesus, you are the healer. Perfection. Perfection. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection. Hallelujah. If you have asthma, lift your hands inside and outside. Asthma. You are suffering from any kind of asthmatic condition. Please lift your hands. I'll pray for you right now. Asthma. Asthma, it's time for you to receive. I hope you get serious with what we are doing. Asthma. I like all of you to say after me, Jesus, I receive. Say after me, Jesus, I receive. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I set you free from asthma right now. Be healed. Begin to breathe in and out. Test yourself. Check yourself right now. Asthma, you are healed totally, totally, not a gradual recovery, totally instant healing from asthma. Drop your hands down and check yourself. Hallelujah. Where's a Jimmy? Come. 
Hallelujah. Um, there's someone here, you have an eye condition, you are Igbo. I think your name is Emeka. Emeka Wafo. The eye condition, it causes pain to go from here all the way. The pain starts from here and it rises all the way to here. Please come out. God wants to heal you. Your name is Emeka. Emeka Wafo. There's another person. You have a kidney condition. You have a kidney condition. You used to have um, supernatural experiences at night. Like you see an angel. They told you your kidney was damaged. Yes, they told you your kidney was damaged and you don't know what to do about it. It's a critical condition. It's, it's almost like it's terminal. And you used to see an angel. And you see the angel holding, holding kidneys. God says I should give you. God says I should give you the kidney. I see a mother. Sorry, I see a grandmother. Your daughter has fibroid. And she has not been able to give birth because of that fibroid. She has diagnosed that the fibroid is occupying her womb. Please come out. God wants to heal you. A grandmother, your daughter has fibroid. She's married. But she has not had a child for a while. There's, I see like cobwebs in her womb. That's the reason why. Okay, you don't know it's fibroid. But she has not given birth for a while. Please, whoever that person is, please come out. And then, I don't know, God gave me a prophecy for China. China. I heard God say capital flight. I heard God say he is concerned for China. Capital flight is going to affect their currency. I don't know when it's going to be, but it's going to be serious. And I hear God say he's concerned for China. Those are, then there are some people, your ministerial calls, your ministerial calls, your ministerial calls, a prophetic call is upon you. I will allow those who operate in the prophetic to pray about it. But God wants to launch people into their ministerial calls. You will begin to experience serious angelic ministration. Serious angelic ministration. So God wants to launch you into that tonight. Emeka. Okay, you are the Emeka. What's wrong with you? Shortage of blood. Shortage of blood. Of blood. Yes. Shortage of blood. And what else? Why once I have shortage of blood, it will just stop. What? When I have shortage of blood, it will just come. What's your son name? Wafo. Unwafo. Emeka Unwafo. That's what I saw. That's what do I know you? No. I've been seeing it since morning. My brother dreamt about you and he told me God was going to do that. When God said a mechan wafo, I said, wow, that means you are Igbo. God said, no, it's a mechan wafo. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you set him free. I overhaul your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You are made whole by the power of God. You are made whole, you are made whole, you are made whole. You are made whole by the power of God. You are made whole in the name of Jesus. Free in Jesus' name. Amen. Then the grandmother that has a okema. They said it's toilet infection. Okay, okay. She, she married, she has not given She has not given birth. I see it like cobwebs. At first I thought it was fibre, but I just saw it like cobwebs, like a mess in her tummy. I see God putting. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Father, I thank you. Father, thank you. I see God putting twins. <laughs> I was afraid to say it, but I see God putting twins. Amen. When you see two fetus in a womb, that's twins, Abby. Yes. Amen. Amen. God Miracle God babies. The names of the twins. What? God gave me the names of the twins. Oh, beautiful. Ah, it's your services. Father, we seal it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for those children who fulfill destiny. We set her free in the name of Jesus. Reconstructive surgery, we set her free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Enjoy the labor over your daughter in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What are you standing here for? The eye. Okay. Father, set him free in Jesus' name. Set him free in Jesus' name. We bring you the kingdom of God in your life and your body. You are made whole in Jesus' name. That foul spirit, go. Life, come. I sight whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then, fibroid. Thank you, Jesus. 
You are free in Jesus' name. Yes. Prophetic ministry. Jump up, please. Just pray for me. When the worship was on, the Lord, I saw an angel of the Lord releasing an anointing upon you, even concerning prayer and the prophetic. And the Lord said he's going to speak through you. The Lord said he's going to open your eyes and give you a see anointing again. Father, thank you for upon our life. Manasseh. Oh yeah. I there's a lady by the name Abigail. Can I have Abigail here? Abigail. 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 There is something that's an Abigail. Abigail. Are you Abigail? Okay, come. I don't know who among you, but I know there is somebody among you that has your family has a, a problem with debt. Amen. Your father is is there's a work your father did somewhere. The money has been held is not paid, and I had the Lord say he's going to restore back the money. Amen. And I don't know who among you has that. That's to do with debt. Amen. The Lord says you need to pay it. And also you over there, you. Yeah. When we're praying, I see the Lord doing the deliverance in your life and your family come. I see the Lord doing a deliverance in your life, even breaking you away from the ignorances that there are some things that have been stopping you from getting married. Hope you hear me. You prayed that very prayer before you came and I want the Lord to encounter you. Father, thank you, Lord, in my life. And I command that every, every Demonic activities against our life is broken in the name of Jesus. Then also, when we're praying, mommy, mommy, I don't know whether that was connected to your daughter, but I saw an angel of the Lord doing a surgery in you. Huh? Yeah. I, I saw an angel of the Lord doing a surgery in you. Yeah. And he said it's going to. I see the Lord taking away something, take something from the body, and I also see the, saw the Lord doing a cleansing in the blood. Yeah. And the Lord said he's going to he's going to perfect that in your dream this night. In Amen. The name of Jesus. Amen. I saw I saw the angel of doing a surgery in you. you. And the Lord said in Jesus' name. And the Lord said he's going to perfect it. Amen. You're, give me let me, let me receive it Father, in Jesus' name. Pardon? I receive it in yeah. Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord. Jesus. It's done in the name of Jesus. It's done in the name of Jesus. And also, Father, concerning the promotion in the family. Concerning the promotion that I've been trusting you, Lord. Lord, the door is open in Jesus' Amen. name. The door is open. When I was praying there, the Lord showed me a vision again for the second time concerning uh, a prominent uh, businessman in the country by the name Dangote. I saw the angel of the Lord. Should I say it? Amen. <laughs> it's going down. Yeah, going down. And and I saw I saw him directly connected to the present Islamic Bank policy, and I saw him doing a donation, and that made the Lord the Lord is going down. Let me just summarize. It's going down. Hallelujah. Okay, so Jamfa, what did you see about them? You can take it from there. Okay, for that yeah, I see like three people standing behind you, and there has been the voice of accusation saying you are guilty. I see certain warfare that you have had to experience over the years, challenges too that has affected your health recurrently over the years. And God says he wants to bring deliverance to you today. God says he's not only touching mommy, but he's bringing a total walk to your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release perfection to your bloodstream, to every fiber of your being. I command that you are healed and you are made perfect tonight in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just a moment. While this is going on, if you've not written your prayer request, let's save time. Please, very quickly, ushers, begin to take the prayer request inside and outside. Now is the time. Your prayer requests. Please, if your friends and loved ones send them through SMS or something, you can just copy it. Let's have it quickly, quickly. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Jamfa. I heard the Lord give me the name Jimo, and I see that your mom has been having a particular sickness 
an infirmity that she has carried for many years and has been a source of great concern to your family. The Lord gives me the name Jimo. Your mom has an ailment that she has carried for many years and has been a source of great concern to your family. I don't know where you are. Just lift up your hands and come. The Lord wants to bring healing. The Lord is giving the name Jimo. Jimo. Is Jimo in this place? Yes, sir. one of our eyes is giving us eyes. Yes, Lord, I pray over Jimo in the name of Jesus. Command healing to his mom's sight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Healing perfection to her. What's okay? I know you, Jimo. What is it that's wrong with your mom? Nothing at all. Okay, that means you're not the one the Lord is speaking about. He's the one. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I should tell you that the work that you are doing right now, that you're not going to do it for everything. God says shortly. He said the business and the things that He has been speaking to you about, He says shortly you have to leave that job. But God says, do not step out until He speaks to you at the appointed time. Hallelujah. Pastor Jakes, I remember like two years ago, the Lord gave me a word for you on your birthday that He was taking you out of Zara to a new land and a strange land that you have never been before. God says, this is a time that is going to multiply you in that land. God says he's ushering your ministry into a new season. And God says it is expected of a steward that he be found faithful. I see many coming to you and giving unto you. And God says he's setting you to father many, but he expects that you be found faithful. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mr. Yums, I see you standing in an office. I don't know what you were doing before you came back to school. But I see you now. God is showing me that as you leave this place, you're going to have your business. You're going to have to do with a place where you walk. I see the one-story building through the staircase. I see you walking around that office. Where you walk before coming to school, is this the description? Please talk to me. Come. Where you walked before coming back to school, is this the description of the place? Exactly. With you. I don't even know where you, you that was in Lagos or wherever, but this is what God is showing me. And God is saying, as you go back, I see increase coming, I see expansion coming, I see you going beyond that one office and taking the whole floor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Apostle Society talking about earthquake. There's so much that the Lord gave me earlier hours of this morning that I wrote. And I saw like a mighty wind and I saw the ground open. And God told me that it's going to be one of the most devastating natural disasters that this generation has seen. And I see it coming in the next few months. I see it cutting across somewhere in North America and somewhere in Asia also. And the Lord shows me in a vision, I saw like a chart. Like a chart. And I saw like a price chart. And God was showing me that in the new year that we're about to enter there's going to be a sudden increase in price of goods and, and commodity in this country there's going to be an unusual increase that we have not experienced in recent times and it will run through the year and, but God shows me the chart coming down again as it rises to the peak I see it coming down so even though it's going to be a difficult time for many things are going to be expensive but God promised that he will watch over his people Hallelujah. Some of the prophecies that God is, is giving me, they may not sound conventional for this moment, but from the early part of this year, I gave a prophecy about the governor of Cardinal State and the governor of Plateau State. And in the vision that God showed me about the governor of Plateau State, God showed me and God said there was an attempt of assassination coming upon his life. And I didn't really understand. I thought that was just going to be physical. And then, until recently, Apostle told me that he's been out of the country on a serious health challenge. And last night, while I was praying, I saw like a spirit of death stood by his side. And God was asking that I pray and rebuke that spirit. I know that God is calling on the church to pray so that he will come back alive. We do not say these things. We are not political mouthpiece. We are just saying the things that the Lord is, is showing us to speak. And I see someone in this place. 
somebody related to you like in your family somebody you lost somebody not to say the person died but the person got missing throughout this from the early part of this year i see that happen the person got missing a loved one a family member that you've been looking for particularly a lady where's that person just lift up your hands a lady it happened this year a lady related my dad's friend your dad's friend okay let me pray for you but the lord shows me a lady that has been missing from the early part of this year and the lord shows that this lady is going to come back going to come back in the name of jesus we declare that wherever she is we declare a release for her i will command her to come back home in the name of the lord jesus i see someone you have in your dream you experience as though your head is shaved in your dream you see your head shift it's a lady and the lord is telling me that it's a spell that the enemy is casting over you even against marriage where are you just lift up your hands i want to declare over you lord i pray i pray i see in in your dream you see your head completely shaved i declare that that spell is broken over your life and i declare total liberty to you in the name of the lord jesus christ in jesus name amen amen for the people that god that apostle prayed for at the beginning I saw something. God God was setting you from mindsets. So your mindsets have been conditioned since you were born. All those ladies. And he said one of the characteristics of your mindset is that you have come to believe that a woman is supposed to be the breadwinner by default. That's what God was saying specifically. God says I should tell you categorically that it was not so from the beginning. And God says he's empowering you so that your reality will be different and it's they were not the only ones god is releasing a grace upon all the ladies in this place who have been characterized that by that mindset that a woman is supposed to be the breadwinner and you have you are prepared for it you have actually made plans strategies business plans business strategies god says it wasn't so from the beginning and he's setting you free in the name of jesus then there's a second group of people God is releasing upon you unusual grace for creativity. I've been sensing that since since three o'clock. Unusual grace for creativity. What the Bible calls witty inventions. In fact, it's the spirit that was upon Bezalel. I see it in the IT. I see it in hospitality and catering, and I see it in the media. Unusual creativity. We would like to pray for you. And lay hands on you and impart that grace to you then the last set of people you've been having dreams for a series of days now and you've been seeing eagles 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 you see mountains you see eagles you've been seeing it for a long time now mountains eagles mountains eagles every time you see in the spirit that's what you see and there are other people who have been sensing in the spirit but have not been seeing what they sense we would like to pray for those people also. If you come out, I'd just like to pray for all the people that are listed. Amen. So those who belong to that category, quickly just come out this way. Wild Jigs ministers, go ahead, sir. Hallelujah. Um, please, if you identify with the name Lami. I heard the name Lami. If you identify with the name Lami, quickly come out, please. If you identify with the name, is that your name or your mother's name? Lami. If you identify hold with on. the name um listen hold on i hope you're not just coming out because you want we're going to pray soon we'll enter another session very quickly and then we'll pray for everybody okay we are just talking about those specifically um that his case concerns so please don't just feel emotional and come out okay all right if you identify with the name lami please just come this way the name lami lami right okay your younger sister actually have a word for um, Lami. Praise God. Then, if you have, um, you're having pains here, it's actually pneumonia. Just on your right, your right side. Actually have received um, healing for that person. If you are that person, quickly come out too. Then there's someone with, presently you're having, you're having pains on your thigh, right now, your right thigh. 
Even as you were standing worshiping you had pains on your right thigh. Okay, mommy, that's you. Okay, on your right thigh. Actually, um received that. The people who migraine, I may not be able to call you out. I know Jangfa mentioned the case of um people that were losing their hair just while lazy um lady raised up her hand. They actually more than that because I actually saw a flash of it. Hallelujah. I saw a flash of it. So Lami, where's Lami? Okay. Okay, Lami. Um what I received for you, the Lord said you should share the testimony. Do you understand? The Lord said you should share the testimony. So I believe the Lord wants to the Lord is releasing something upon you. He wants to bless you, okay? With something that you share. Are you also Lami? Okay, your younger sister. So I'm just going to quickly pray with you. Then the case is what is what you come for? Okay, Lami. All right. I'm just going to quickly pray with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please you have if you're having migraine, you may not need to come out. Just put your hands wherever you're having the pain. Just migraine. Your forehead, I felt that too for you and I felt the healing for you. Then um people with pains just at the right shoulder. At the right shoulder, you're having a pain there. Just put your hands there. There's no need to come out. Please just put your hand. I'm going to pray with you right now and the Lord is going to touch you and heal you wherever you are. In the name of Jesus Christ, will you pick every pain, every migraine I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus Christ and every pain on the shoulder I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please let's have all the prayer requests. All the prayer requests very quickly. Please can we rise on our feet? I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, sing God. Is this all inside and outside ushers? How many of you are here to drop your request? Let me see. Please we need some ushers just let them have it very quickly so that they can Just lift it up so that you can drop it. We want to pray on the request. Hallelujah. May I request all the servants of God here to just come out as we pray. Now this is not just a ceremony. Please listen. This is not just a religious ceremony. Hallelujah. God has been so faithful unto us and that this we are not just doing it because we should do it. God gave us an instruction to do it. And I want you to know that whatever it is that is represented here by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, miracles will so erupt from this. I like you to believe it, please. Believe it. Yes, you can bring them ushers. Let's have it quickly. Hallelujah. Please come Pastor Jakes, you can come. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now as we pray on this request, please instrumentalist, I like you to play just, you know, clash the cymbal, give your best. And we're going to pray in the spirit. I like everyone to join us as you pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. And then we're going to speak over it and release. I know that there are impossible cases humanly in this request cases that only god can bring liberty to people but i want you to know that there is a god that sits in heaven he created the heavens and the earth in 7 days it will not take him too long to change the situations here there are financial situations represented here marital situations um issues of barrenness and so on and so forth we are going to pray Right, I like everybody to begin to pray in the spirit. Please let's come back. Let's come in the spirit. 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 Let's come in the
Come on, pray inside and outside. This is the time when we get to pray prophetically. We release miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus as representatives of the living Christ. Let impossible situations give way. I see doors being opened in the vision. I see gates being opened by the Spirit. Miracles being released by the Spirit. Father, we pray right now as the servants of the living God, commissioned by grace. We're praying on these requests. And Lord, we declare that every situation represented here will change for good. In the name of Jesus. For your loved ones and for your families right now you will receive supernatural calls telling you about the eruption of miracles supernatural miracles death cancellation by the spirit promotions by the spirit children by the spirit supernatural marriages in the name of the lord jesus healing of terminal diseases admissions into institutions Lord we agree by faith and we establish it in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah the last thing we are going to do please let me the servants of Christ I like us to stand there's going to be a stirring of spiritual gifts we all represent different offices and operation of the spirit now I like you to believe this is the moment you do not want to miss Please can we just form a straight line and hold our hands together and lift it up. 
inside and outside i'd like you to connect for apostles prophets teachers pastors evangelists there will be a supernatural connection of the spirit by faith this is what the lord is telling me to do tell me we are going to lift up our voices and stretch our hands towards you many of you will encounter levels of power and insight that you have never seen before you came for miracle service and even among ourselves there will be a transfer of virtue take note hallelujah Please let the cymbal not stop. So I play the instruments. Can you transpose? Now go ahead and receive. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a release. Inside and outside, let the prophetic flow come mighty. Let the apostolic flow come mighty. Let the teaching anointing, the office of teachers, evangelist, be stirred up now. Now, now, inside and outside, prophets, arise, I speak to your spirit, apostles, arise, arise, apostles, arise, pastors, arise, shepherds of the body, arise, in the name of Jesus, arise, shepherds of the body, evangelists, receive the anointing. 
supernatural anointing for creativity for creativity for creativity the spirit of Bezalel I see purple rain falling purple rain falling receive it now creativity the spirit of Bezalel creativity Come up with witty inventions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to speak over your finances. Everybody. Everybody. We are going to speak. I, I'm glad the ministers are holding. Please believe it. This is an unusual miracle service. God is doing strange things. You've heard the prophecies about next year. I didn't tell you. I saw the capital of China been affected and devastated greatly greatly let me tell you the truth we announced it here the first recession we were criticized for it when we said a recession was coming and we did announce it again that another recession is coming and i'm saying it again another recession is coming but when there was going to be famine in egypt wisdom was given to joseph and a strategy was communicated hallelujah the Bible says when men say there is a casting now He said for seven years you shall save And during the famine you shall step out in that abundance I want to pray for your finances Hear me friends It's not by your knowledge and calculation No, wealth is spiritual Forget about uh, all of this Arrogance of economies that is shaming them Every man who has truly gotten wealth whether by God's way or Satan's way knows that wealth is spiritual when you see a rich man you say this guy has gone to the native doctor we understand I want to pray for you some of you need to stand in for your loved ones because you know gone are the days when we pretend that this is not an issue it has caused wreck and havoc and damages in families enough is enough as servants of the Lord we want to pray for your life you mustn't believe it but if you care the Lord doesn't want you to survive. He wants you to be blessed so that you can advance the kingdom. And here's the scripture the Lord gave me. Let me just read it quickly. I want us to hurry up. Revelation chapter 3. Mm. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For I know that thou hast little strength And hast kept my word And hast not denied my name I pray right now I sense an anointing In the name That is above Every other name If I be a servant of the living God Then now I pray Let there be a baptism Of supernatural Inexplainable wealth Is an anointing I release it Take it now Take it now, take it now, take it now, take it now. It's an anointing. Receive it for your finances. Receive it for your finances, for your families. It's an anointing. Receive it. Take it. It's yours. Receive it. It will impart wisdom. It will impart favor. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. There are certain virtues that God has blessed us with as a ministry. And Peter says, Such as I have, give I unto you. Hear me with all humility. Any right thinking man seeing the hand of God upon this ministry knows that it's not about us. Anyone who has sense enough. You know that there is a factor And there are spiritual principles There are certain blessings that God has blessed us with When God calls a man There are certain dimensions of graces that are operational Hallelujah And I want to pray We want to declare some of these things upon you You will be surprised How these things will change your life Please let there be every sense of 
unbelief kick it out are you listening to me now it's not the time to doubt god is changing someone here god has blessed us with a dimension of his presence his presence many of you will begin to step into unusual levels the lord told me something some years ago he says son i give you my presence as a gift my father i raise a cry let the presence the angel of the lord's presence that has walked with us commanding signs wonders undeniable manifestations if god be god let the angel of the lord's presence be released towards you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus the angel of the lord's presence and Moses said, do not send us from here if your presence goeth not with us. He said, how shall they know that we are a separated people? The second is favor. The Bible says, hear me. It said that Esther anointed herself with a particular oil for one year. And she walked before King Ahasuerus. And suddenly, a woman who had no human qualification by the favor of God, the Lord calls it the Esther anointing. The Lord has given us grace, favor we cannot even explain. Favor we cannot explain. Lord, in the name of Jesus, receive this favor in the name of Jesus. Strange dimension of favor, favor with God favor with man we release it in the name of Jesus let favor follow you from today bringing blessings bringing victory bringing results that you cannot explain favor favor your academics favor your relationship favor your business it's called grace it's called grace receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah number three the Lord has blessed us with wisdom the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing he said dear forget wisdom he said and with all thy getting get understanding he said on no hand she shall promote thee he said she shall bring a, an ornament of glory upon thy head when thou dost embrace her he said does not wisdom cry by wisdom he founded the earth and by understanding he said he established it wisdom 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 my father I pray that in this October miracle service let men and women leave this place with an impartation of the spirit of wisdom receive it in the name of Jesus 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 the spirit of wisdom is yours receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah one of the things that God has blessed us I call it the spirit of Elijah supernatural speed and acceleration hear me friends I want there is something called speed the Bible makes us understand that when he, he, he told her saddle your ass and run I hear the sound of the abundance of rain but he went back and when he prayed and saw the feast cloud like a feast of Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon him he gathered his loins and used his bare foot and began to run and he overtook the chariots of Ahaz the Bible says at a certain time Jesus told the disciples to use the last boat and go and they were six hours ahead of him but when he finished praying he encountered an anointing he got up and started walking on the water and was almost overtaking them let me tell you something when the spirit of speed comes upon you you will pursue and you will overtake 
as though you never experienced a lack. Now, please, I want you to believe it. Oh, I want you to believe it. There are many people who are in their need of restorations in their lives and for families. And right now, we pray in the name that is above every other name. At the mention of that name, we sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit. Receive speed now, now, acceleration, speed. Speed in marriage, speed in your job, acceleration, speed, 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 you will run, you will run, speed, advancement, acceleration. Hallelujah. One of the things that God has given us is honor. 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 Kingdom honor. The Bible says, because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness, it said, therefore our God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's a season to honor your people and to bring them to limelight for the sake of the kingdom. Therefore, I pray right now that everything that has kept you bound such that you cannot come to light, there are families that have been kept bound. Hallelujah. Tonight, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. And with this anointing, I command, let the doors of the prison over families over finances let doors be open in the name of Jesus we call you to a place of honor in the name of Jesus we call you to a place of influence in the name of Jesus receive it for yourself receive it for your loved ones receive it for your family in the name of the Lord Jesus Hallelujah. Something must show in your life for men to know that the Lord lives. Are you listening to me? Something must show in your life. Something must show. That's why you came for this miracle service. Something must show in your life. We want to rebuke the plague of death. Now, please take it serious. When God gives instructions like this, take it very seriously. Hallelujah. We want to take authority over the plague of death. The Bible says when they asked Balaam to go and curse them, when he went, he found out that the ark was positioned in a particular way. He could not curse them. For he said, the shout of a king is in their midst. I declare in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. Right now, we lift up the ban of death over your life and over your family members in the name of Jesus. No more death. No more accidents. No more terminal diseases. In the name of Jesus. don't care what scheming of Satan but we are agreeing right now that the hedge of protection comes over your life and over your family how many of you know we need the protection of God in Nigeria right now you get up and live peacefully and someone gets up and just causes chaos but we speak upon every one of you for life is a choice and in the name of Jesus as a ministry we choose life and we decree and declare that there is life upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No death. No death. Hallelujah. No death. Lord, we give you praise 
for the mighty things that you are doing. One last thing I'm going to pray for very quickly. Is what I began to share the opening of the doors. While I prepared for this meeting, the Lord began to tell me to open up closed doors. Now I know many of you may not understand the power and the relevance of opening up of these doors. But you are going to pray it anyway. Are you listening to me? In Psalm 24, it says, The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. It said, The worlds and all they that dwell therein. So there is no controversy. We can fight over lands, but the earth is the Lord's. Are you listening to me? And he said, For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the waters. And then the Bible says, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He said, He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. As a result, he will receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. And then he said, This is the generation of them that seek thee. Seek thy face, O Jacob. And then there is a saying, and this is where we are coming in. He said, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Friends, there are gates, so are you listening to me? There are gates, and the Bible calls them ancient doors. He said that the king of glory will come in. The gates are not just things, they are people. Because they spoke back. They said, who is this king of glory? And then there was a response. He said, the Lord, Yahweh, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. And we are going to be raising a cry. And command and say, the gates be lifted. And ancient doors be opened. When Jesus was caved in a place, on the third day, the Bible says an angel came. And roll away the stone, and there he came, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I believe by the opening of this door, God is opening us up. We have seen it, we have prophesied it, we have announced it. Now I like us to step into it. The opening of the gates. I don't know about you, but I prayed this. I poured my life out on this. I said, Lord, this is the season that we step. He told Moses, tell the people to move forward. Tell them, go forward. Tell them, the Egyptians that you see today, you see them no more. In one minute, lift up your voice and begin to pray. The days. Gates of limitation. We challenge gates. We challenge ancient doors. It's time for the church to arise. It's time for the body to arise into our prophetic destiny, into our heritage in Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. Lift up your hands. Come on, praise. up your head to he gates. Let the church of God step into our prophetic destiny. It's time for us to arise with the glory of our king and step into this system and invade this system with the life, the power, the glory of God. He said thy kingdom come and thy will be done in this realm as it is in the heavens. And so we establish your counsel. It's time for the church to arise and be lampstands indeed, even by the anointing of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. Those of you who are here, inside and outside, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye 
that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest enough of sorrow and frustration tonight the Lord is calling you into a relationship the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart as in the provocation and so the Lord is calling right now if you've not made up your mind to stand for Jesus to give your hearts to Jesus Christ this is an opportunity to end your wrestle with the Spirit of God and to make a decision or if you've given your heart to the Lord but have turned away because of several challenges we welcome you right now and so I'm inviting you inside and outside leave your seat and walk out Jesus is calling you it's time for a great relationship appreciate them as they come inside and outside the Lord is calling you hallelujah please keep standing keep standing don't sit down this is the greatest miracle of all the Lord is calling you leave your seat and come out God is calling as you hear his voice please step out harden not your heart it's time for a new relationship it's time for a new level the Lord is calling you appreciate them they are coming this is the greatest miracle inside and outside we take authority over every influence that wants to stop you from being saved now is your time now is the hour we welcome you into the glorious family of God we welcome you come as you are come as you are there is no condemnation come as you are it doesn't matter what you have done inside and outside the Lord is calling you please come up your space to appreciate you until you come please keep clapping let's celebrate this miracle let's celebrate this harvest let's celebrate this harvest many coming into the fold the Spirit of God is still speaking to you inside and outside I'd like you to come run to him he's calling you He's calling you. He's calling you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sincerely want to express my joy for this bold decision that you have made. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you are not ashamed of me before men, I will not be ashamed of you before my Father. Hallelujah. This is the greatest miracle in this place. A translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. And we salute you, we congratulate you. It's a bold step that will begin a new season in your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to quickly pray this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, please mean it from your heart. This is not a special number. It's a serious prayer. Hallelujah. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me I believe you shed your blood for me I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior I receive eternal life in my spirit and I declare that I'm born again I'm washed by the blood I am free I denounce sin and Satan and I receive authority to be called a child of God from today I'm born again the spirit of God lives in me dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salman and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus I'll see you again Bye.